couple of weeks ago, I compared FSR4 to DLSS4 at a 1440p resolution and concluded that FSR4 is a pretty great upscaling technology. It's much better than FSR3.1, often outperforming NVIDIA's DLSS3, although the newer DLSS4 with its Transformer AI model still comes out on top. But how does it compare at 4K? That's what I'll be exploring in today's video. Examining upscaling at different output resolutions is important because upscaling quality changes drastically between 1080p, 1440p, and 4K. At higher resolutions, more data is fed into the upscaling algorithm, so output quality is typically better than at lower resolutions. With FSR 3.1, for example, quality mode upscaling was often usable at 4K, but really rough at 1080p, so I'm interested to see how FSR 4 performs in the most favorable conditions for the technology. All of the FSR 4 examples were captured at 4K using the Radeon RX 9070 XT, while all of the other examples were captured using the GeForce RTX 5090. I've used a selection of games, all of which had settings such as motion blur, grain, vignette, and chromatic aberration disabled. Sharpness has been set to zero for upscaling. All DLSS 3 examples were upgraded to DLSS 3.8.10, with the exception of Hunt Showdown. That remains on DLSS 3.7, as it can't be upgraded. All DLSS 4 examples are using the latest model via NVIDIA's driver override, so let's get into it. One of the most impressive aspects to FSR 4 was its improvement compared to FSR 3.1 at 1440p. The newer AI-based upscaler is significantly better at this popular 1440p resolution, even when comparing the quality modes, and the difference only gets larger when comparing the performance modes. At 4K though, the improvement FSR 4 brings is a little different, as FSR 3.1 is more usable at this resolution. Now, in my opinion, there's still a large difference between FSR 4 and FSR 3.1 at 4K using the quality mode, and I think most gamers will be able to notice the upgrade FSR 4 brings. But some of the artifacts that were very noticeable in the FSR 3.1 1440p footage are less visible at 4K, so the gap isn't quite as large. For example, the FSR 3.1 4K quality mode can be a bit grainy in elements like hair and transparencies, but not to the degree you see at 1440p, where these things really can be fully garbled and quite distracting. Still, across the image, there is a clear sharpness, clarity, and apparent resolution upgrade from using FSR 4 compared to FSR 3.1. Fine detail like grass is noticeably improved in FSR 4, even using the quality mode. Transparencies are much cleaner, hair is rendered properly, and there's much less shimmering across the presentation. Some of the worst examples for FSR 3.1, like Ratchet & Clank Rift Apart, are substantially improved from the upgrade to FSR 4, with the highlight being superior stability. This gives the FSR 4 image more of a 4K feel, whereas the FSR 3.1 image is like you're playing the game at a lower resolution, even if the output is still 4K. The gap widens when we examine FSR 4 versus FSR 3.1 using the performance mode. The performance mode at this resolution is quite a bad showing for FSR 3.1, more in line with what we saw at 1440p. FSR 4 is clearly much better, it's far less grainy, much more stable, and actually in many situations it ends up usable at this resolution. In fact, if you were using the FSR 3.1 quality mode at 4K previously, switching to FSR 4 performance mode should be an upgrade in most situations. That's how far things have improved. This clip from Spider-Man 2 clearly shows this improvement, which should allow for better performance out of new RDNA 4 cards in realistic, usable conditions, because you can now use FSR 4 performance upscaling instead of FSR 3 quality. The rest of this video, I'm going to compare FSR 4 to DLSS, because that's where the more interesting battle lies. FSR 4, well, it smashes FSR 3.1 comfortably, but like we found at 1440p, there's a lot more nuance in how FSR 4 stacks up against DLSS 3 and 4. I'm not going to go through every example we showed in the initial 1440p video, instead focusing on a few tests just to verify if what we saw at 1440p also applies to 4K. One of the great aspects to FSR 4 and DLSS 4 that we found when examining at 1440p was how these upscalers reduce or even eliminate TAA-related blur in motion. This is also the case at 4K, though relative to DLSS 4, FSR 4 is a bit less impressive at this resolution than at 1440p. At the lower resolution, I often found the FSR 4 quality mode image to be noticeably improved compared to DLSS 3, sitting somewhere between DLSS 3 and 4. At 4K, DLSS 4 is a bit more impressive, and in similar examples, FSR 4 appears closer to DLSS 3, though usually still superior. 
I think this is because the blur TAA based technologies introduce in motion is less pronounced at 4K than it is at 1440p, especially with DLSS 3 where there's less of a difference between stationary and motion at 4K. DLSS 4 manages to preserve texture quality really well, FSR 4 less so, but even in the least favourable conditions, it's usually as good as DLSS 3 for texture quality, if not better. This remains true when comparing using the performance mode instead of quality. Even if the experience isn't quite at the level of DLSS 4 upscaling, FSR 4 offers very good clarity and sharpness when playing games at 4K. If you own a 4K monitor, you want detail in the image, and FSR 4 provides that where previous iterations of AMD's upscaler have been quite blurry. The performance mode, for example, is usable from a texture quality perspective and ends up looking quite similar to the quality mode in how it reduces TAA blur. Previously, there's just no way I would have recommended the use of the performance mode. When it comes to image stability, FSR 4 is more impressive at 4K than at 1440p. There were times assessing 1440p where FSR 4 was less stable than DLSS 3, and some weird oddities where the FSR 4 balanced mode would produce better stability than FSR 4 quality. In either of these situations, we're not seeing those sorts of cases when looking at 4K. In general image stability, in the worst cases, FSR 4 is typically a match for DLSS 3 when both are using the quality mode. FSR 4 isn't as rock solid as DLSS 4 in these examples, but the image quality is usable and there isn't noticeably more shimmering than DLSS 3. Also, due to the higher output resolution, artifacts like shimmering or sizzling are a lot less visible at 4K than 1440p, so the overall stability of the image is improved relative to 1440p. I also found the level of stability to be similar between quality and balanced modes, or it's in favour of the quality mode, unlike at 1440p, where for some reason the lower balanced mode was more stable in some of the examples. Some of the obvious artifacts I saw previously, like weird aliasing on these bricks in The Last of Us, is either a lot less visible or eliminated entirely when using FSR 4 at 4K, which helps a lot to deliver better image quality and be more competitive with DLSS. The level of stability provided at 4K helps out with some of the trickier elements, like grates and meshes. FSR 4 looks quite reasonable here, and I even found some examples where it handles this slightly better than DLSS 4 in my opinion. This is due to FSR 4 having fewer disocclusion artifacts than DLSS 4, a phenomenon we saw at 1440p that is also present at 4K. Around moving characters in third-person games and also things like mesh fences, FSR 4 has less sizzling and graininess, though again, how visible this is depends on the game, the movement, and the quality settings used. I was also quite impressed with FSR 4 using the performance mode, with its stability and emotion often beating DLSS 3's performance mode and sitting somewhere between DLSS 3 and 4. Now DLSS 4 is still the most stable presentation with the best overall image quality, but having FSR 4 performance actually being more usable than DLSS 3 performance is a huge win. It depends on the game, but from a stability perspective, it's easy to justify using balanced or even the performance mode with FSR 4, which you absolutely couldn't say about FSR 3. The only main downside from using those lower FSR 4 modes is a bit of a loss of fine details. They can be lost or smoothed a bit at this resolution in an attempt to remain stable, and this is most noticeable relative to DLSS 4, which retains stability and fine detail. FSR 4 is still reasonable for fine detail reconstruction at 4K, but if you want the cleanest and clearest image, it's best to stick with the higher modes. One of the big gains we saw from FSR 4 relative to FSR 3 was in transparencies, and this is also true when viewing the results at 4K. FSR 4 is as good as DLSS for holograms and fire, it's no longer the garbled blurry mess from previous iterations. Particle and rain quality holds up super well at this resolution too, the snow here in Horizon Zero Dawn is of decent quality even down at the performance mode when compared to DLSS 3 and 4, so your eyes won't bleed in these sorts of scenes anymore when using low FSR modes. The last thing I'm going to explore is foliage quality, like at 1440p, FSR 4 grass quality is excellent, sitting between DLSS 3 and 4. In some examples like Ratchet and Clank and Hunt Showdown, FSR 4 is less grainy than DLSS 3 when using the quality mode, and in other examples like Horizon Zero Dawn, I think grass looks pretty similar to DLSS 4. 
The criticism I had previously was that occasionally tree stability would be worse in the FSR4 image than DLSS3 while still producing a sharper and clearer image. That's less of an issue at 4K because general image stability at 4K is superior to 1440p. This means that in the worst cases, FSR4 tree quality generally looks similar to DLSS3, which is a good outcome. Though like in other aspects, DLSS4 is the way to go for the best tree upscaling. Even with some of the finest tree details, like thin branches without leaves, FSR4 can be a little more stable than DLSS3, though with the trade-off of not quite as much detail while stationary. This is true when examining both the quality modes and performance modes, so it's another example where FSR4 holds up when using a lower quality setting, something that we wouldn't have been able to say with previous versions of the technology. In terms of FPS performance, there's really nothing interesting to say here that wasn't said in the 1440p examination. I tested FSR on the RX 9070 XT and DLSS on the RTX 5070 Ti, both of which deliver similar performance, or at least as close as we can get with the current lineups. I tested the same four games as in the previous video at the same settings, this time just showing the GeoMean average results. At 4K, we see basically the same as what we saw at 1440p. The performance uplift that FSR4 delivers is similar to the uplift from DLSS4. The FSR4 quality mode delivered a 35% performance increase over native TAA on the 9070 XT, while DLSS4 quality delivered a 31% gain on the 5070 Ti. The bounce modes were neck and neck in performance, while the performance mode ran a little faster on the DLSS4 side. The newest versions of both upscalers are a little more taxing than the previous versions, though the hit is definitely worth it given the quality increase we're seeing from FSR4 and DLSS4 versus FSR3 and DLSS3. So that's how FSR4 stacks up at 4K. In general, most of what we said in the 1440p analysis also applies to gaming at 4K, so if you want a more in-depth exploration of FSR4 image quality and performance, check out our original video. But what was good to confirm is that if anything, FSR4 is actually better at 4K than at 1440p, with some of the edge case issues resolved when rendering at a higher resolution. Specifically, FSR4 is more stable at 4K, and this allows it to generally either match or outperform DLSS3 across the board. At 1440p, there were some cases where FSR4 could fall behind NVIDIA's last-gen upscaler, but based on what I've seen, this is much less likely to occur at 4K, with FSR4 cementing its spot between DLSS3 and DLSS4 in image quality. Ultimately, DLSS4 is more stable and more highly detailed, with an even sharper presentation than we saw at 1440p, but FSR4 is very usable, especially if you previously considered DLSS3 as good enough. FSR4 is actually better than that. I also think FSR4 is a quite substantial upgrade over FSR 3.1 at 4K, even though FSR3 is more usable at higher resolutions like this. Image detail and stability is much better when using the quality modes, and it's a night and day difference using the performance modes. You probably wouldn't want to use FSR 3.1 performance, but FSR 4 performance is acceptable at 4K. In fact, if you previously thought FSR 3.1 quality mode was good enough for 4K gaming, and not too much of a visual downgrade, you should expect to see an upgraded experience from using the FSR 4 performance mode. It's simply that much better. For most people, I believe you'll get a really great experience using either the FSR4 quality or bounce modes in a wide variety of games, and as I said, the performance mode is also acceptable if you want an additional FPS boost. The performance mode doesn't get as strong of a recommendation at 4K as it did with DLSS4, but the balanced FSR4 mode is definitely now viable, and the quality mode is noticeably improved. While AMD has done a great job of getting the quality of FSR4 up to scratch, I'm still a bit concerned about game support. Obviously, AMD has to play rapid catch-up to ensure FSR4 is as widely adopted as DLSS4, and for at least the next while, this will be a major factor when deciding between a Radeon and GeForce graphics card. DLSS is simply supported in far more titles, and it's unreasonable to expect hundreds of FSR4 game updates straight away. But it's been disappointing to see how slow AMD has been at delivering FSR4 updates for games that should support FSR4. As we know, AMD need to whitelist games in their driver so that the FSR 3.1 to FSR4 upgrade toggle appears, and ideally this should be done as part of day one driver updates. That really hasn't happened though, which is leaving RX 9000 series buyers without day one FSR4 support in major releases. As some examples, Assassin's Creed Shadows launched with FSR 3.1, so should support an FSR 4 upgrade, but doesn't. 
NVIDIA supported DLSS 4 in this title day one via their driver override feature. Kingdom Come Deliverance 2 was announced as an FSR 4 title when AMD unveiled the feature, but still lacks support today despite using FSR 3.1. This is another title with DLSS 4 support already available. Indiana Jones and the Great Circle was recently upgraded to FSR 3.1, but it can't be upgraded to FSR 4 because it uses Vulkan, which the tech doesn't support yet. But again, that's not an issue for DLSS 4. And we just haven't seen many other games even being upgraded to FSR 3.1 that would allow an FSR 4 upgrade, even older titles, titles that were already released. Now, AMD say they check the quality of FSR 4 in titles before whitelisting them in driver releases, but... Come on guys, day one support is crucial. These checks should be performed before launch and games should be added regularly with each driver update. The latest driver, for example, 25.3.2, added support for Assassin's Creed Shadows, but apparently that support doesn't extend to FSR 4 driver upgrades, a crucial feature. To be fair, the other game listed in this driver update, The Last of Us Part 2, does now support an FSR 4 upgrade in the driver, but ideally you'd like to see this for all the games that are listed when a game's day one support is added to a driver, especially if that title does support FSR 3.1, which again, that should be able to be upgraded, but at the moment just isn't. If AMD can get game support right and start pumping out driver updates that actually enable FSR 4 in 2025 releases, they'll be on a really good footing to compete in the upscaling ecosystem. FSR 4 is great at 4K, it's more usable than ever before, and I'm keen to check out how it goes at 1080p shortly, but yeah, game support really is the limiting factor at the moment. So anyway, that's it for this one. Just a brief look at FSR 4 compared to DLSS 4 and 3 at the 4K resolution. If you want a full breakdown of everything that you need to know about FSR 4, the 1440p video has got much more detail in it, much more comparisons, that sort of thing. So it's well worth checking that one out. As I said, we've got plenty more coverage of upscaling coming in the next couple of weeks. So stay subscribed to Hardware Unboxed if you want more of that content. What else? We've got our Patreon account. Links to that is in the description below. If you sign up, you get access to some cool benefits, monthly live streams, Discord chat, BTS content, plenty of good stuff. So thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.